Well, and moving on to the last and one of the most important topics of the entire interview preparation module, the most common interview mistakes. Now, these are four slides which compiles all those interview mistakes that students most commonly make, unknowingly, unwillingly, and unintentionally. The moment you read these four slides right before your next interview, I am telling you, you will not make them. It will be in your head and it's important to focus on them. It's a compilation of not just a lot of experience, but a lot of body language techniques that a lot of students go wrong with. So be very careful. Save this video. This is a very important video. It comprises of all the main common mistakes that a lot of candidates make. And I'm sure that you won't after reading all of this. To start with, a lot of students usually update their social media. Never update your social media with pertaining, with anything pertaining to the interview. Whether it's before the interview, you're going for the interview, you're given the interview, the interviewer was nice, I cracked the interview, nothing to do with the interview. Never ever update your social media. We are talking about overbearing and over aggressive nature and overconfident attitude. So in all your answers, never have these traits. The inability to express oneself clearly and explain strengths. Poor communication skills. Now, the reason why you're not able to convey the right answer to these kind of questions where you have to mention about your strengths and your weaknesses is because you haven't prepared them. Throughout the last three modules, I've spoken to you about how to prepare for these questions, the, the mindset that you need to have, the preparation, the research, the understanding of the job description that you need. If you are showing improper communication skills, poor communication skills, you have the inability to express clearly and explain your own strengths then I have lost confidence in whatever you will say thereon. And this is, an, this is a question which is usually asked right at the start. So the moment you make this mistake, you're not able to convey a right answer or a confident answer to the recruiter about yourself, about your own strengths, you lose out. This is one thing that is never to be done. If you are showing a lack of planning and goal planning, there's a lack of direction in your life, you're doing this and that, your experiences are talking about this, your communication is talking about this, the story that you've been able to explain about yourself, in that you're talking about this. If there is no direction, if there's no career planning, hey, this is what I want to do and this is how I want to achieve it, then I might not be hiring the right person for achieving my goals and my targets because a lack of planning for themselves means that you won't be able to plan it for someone else either. So it's important to show conviction, it's important to show a sense of direction for yourself first and then say that, all right, I am ready for the company. There is lack of involvement on on-campus or community activities. I've been laying a lot of stress on, we spoke about this in the, in the right at the start when we were talking about the interview questions, we were talking about this in the resume video as well. I've spoken about the other things that you're supposed to do apart from your studies. So it's really, really important that you show involvement on, on campus and community activities. What is it that you've done outside the classroom? Have you attended conferences? Have you gone out doing some form of research? Are you participating in any internships? Do you have any group that you're a part of? What is it that you are doing professionally and for your personal growth apart from your academics? I want to know that. And if there's a lack of involvement, which means that you're a very, you're a very reserved individual and I need somebody vocal. I need somebody to think beyond the brief. And that will happen only when you have that involvement. And so, never make this mistake. If you're using slang and improper grammar, communication today is, is of utmost importance. The English language that we are using, the grammatical mistakes have to be avoided at any cost. Grammar is going to play a very important role. Pronunciation is going to play a very important role. All this is a part of your grammar and the communication process. So, using of slangs, you cannot use slangs in an interview. You may use it with your friends. You might even use it with a few colleagues when you join the organization but not in the interview. If you're not dressed appropriately, we have already spoken about the dressing attire. We've already spoken about enthusiasm. We've already spoken about the smile that you need to have. I've been laying a lot of stress on smile, smile, smile. Even during a Zoom call or a video interview, even through a phone call, a telephonic interview, even on a face-to-face -face interview, you have to smile. That enthusiasm and that passion has to come across to the recruiter inappropriately dressed. We've already spoken about how the males and female candidates are supposed to be dressed. You have to suit up, you'll be wearing your tie, you'll be wearing your shirt, your blazer, your formal shoes, nothing, nothing that draws unnecessary attention. 
improper attire and offensive or excessive body piercings now even if you have tattoos you have piercings you don't have to necessarily show it to them if they can be hidden if they can be avoidable please avoid it please because they will draw unnecessary attention we don't want to be we don't want to look cool we don't want to look uh, you know hip and trending and we don't we don't want to look like a millennial or the gen z from the hip hop or from the indie pop generation we want to look extremely professional just tone it down be very subtle very simple very professional very elegant about what you wear not anything fancy excessive perfume now a lot of people make this mistake they put on too much perfume putting on perfume you have to smell nice it's very important you can't put on too much why because it's going to distract not just the recruiter but it's also going to create some bit of irritation you want to breathe normal air also you want to know that the other person is smelling nice it will always create a positive impact but it cannot be too strong there is something that we call as itter or itr a lot of people put that during an interview or for an interview that is going to create a repulsive you know, sensation for the recruiter the recruiter would not want to smell that for too long it's too strong and uh, and in any case you know you can smell itter for from a from a far distance and just imagine this person sitting right in front of you so it becomes very very important however if you're sitting at a on a video interview and you're giving a video interview please put that because what happens is you will feel fresh so we already spoken that even during a video interview or a telephonic interview you have to suit up you still have to wear your your interview dress your interview attire it's also important to smell nice at the same time because you know that you are you, that you are feeling fresh you are feeling energetic but not too much during a personal interview or face to face interview excessive makeup something very similar i've already spoken about this during the dressing sense when we were talking about that for the females not too much excessive makeup very subtle elegant professional is what we are looking at lack of confidence ill at ease too nervous you are not uh, you know that confident we're not looking at somebody who's you know comfortably sitting comfortably relaxed is in in his or her zone you're too nervous you're too you know you're too uptight you're too conscious about every word that you're seeing you're not at ease i want someone at ease i want someone with that confidence i want someone to not be too nervous. i want somebody who's sitting in front of me confident you know why because this might be an interview this might this is a conversation with two people who you're not expecting you're not expecting you don't even know what that interviewer is going to look like a day before so this is the first interaction between you and the interviewer and this is a similar interaction which you will have throughout your professional life you will be meeting people who you haven't met for the first time you haven't met ever and you'll be meeting them for the first time you'll be meeting people who are who are going to be senior older to you with a lot of experience and people who have decision making powers how is it that you will interact with them so this is also a simulator for the recruiter to understand how comfortably you can talk to people who you are meeting for the first time poor academic record of course marks are not everything but if you are talking about poor academic record if you if you if you're not up to the mark the level of knowledge and understanding of the technical side is not there then i have a problem if you're talking too much about money i've already spoken about it in the previous lectures that money the ctc the salary negotiation is a separate round you do not talk about it over here not in the first interview in the in the salary negotiation round also you don't have to lay a lot of emphasis on it has to be a very reasonable amount that you are quoting which i said should be up to 20% for negotiation if you're going too much above that it's going to create a distraction for the recruiter will not select you expecting too much too soon unwilling to start at the bottom and work up if you really want to grow in an organization you'll have to start from a particular level that particular level may not be the level that you want to start from it might be your level l1 or l2 below that it's perfectly fine you have to learn to grow in the organization nobody can just hire you at the top level without any experience you need that experience you need that confidence you need to grow in that industry you need to have that knowledge that understanding so don't think that you are you're somebody who's ready to run the company at at 18 years old and you're just sitting for a campus placement it won't happen like that it will happen over a period of time definitely but do not expect too much too early being evasive and making excuses of course you can't make excuses you can't make and obvious excuses if there are if there is something wrong in in your answer if there is something fishy and you're making evasive uh moves you're giving evasive answers you are making excuses unnecessary excuses it is going to show the recruiter that you want an easy way out you don't care that is not supposed to happen we then move on to lack of tact or courtesy or maturity it's very important to have a mature attitude while answering somebody 
you have to be courteous as well you can't be arrogant you can't be you know too dominating just be very subtle very simple very professional don't and and be mature at the same time be courteous at the same time don't be somebody who's sitting there over confidently and thinks that he or she will crack their interview just calm down a lot of people also make a mistake where they are talking ill about their previous employers again this is one very very bad uh, trait of any candidate sitting for an interview the moment you start talking about you start talking ill about your previous employer it shows that you know you're not too happy with employment there was something wrong over there you don't know what the reality is the recruiter doesn't know what the reality is and you're just you know talking ill about your your previous job which means you will be talking ill about this company as well and i don't want that i want somebody who's mature enough i want somebody who will take the who will take this company forward if you're talking about if you're talking ill about your previous employer which means you will talk ill about me as well i don't want you poor eye contact you have to look straight into the recruiter's eyes you cannot look here and there while answering it just shows that you're not focused and it shows that there is something wrong maybe you're underconfident maybe you're lying you don't want negative body language look straight into the eyes of the recruiter a limp handshake or a handshake that is too strong so you're barely you know making a handshake or it's too tight it's too too firm too hard and it's painful and you're really pressing and grabbing somebody's somebody's palm that is not supposed to be done it has to be a firm handshake a comfortable handshake a professional handshake i'll be talking about this in the body language videos but this is something that has to be avoided at any cost if you are somebody who is just hopping on to you now this points as candidates who appear to be shopping around or job hopping if you're just hopping from one job to another and you know that you're just you know taking a taste of how is this company working how is that company working there's no there's no uh, you're not stopping in a company to grow to see how your professional life is working you're just hopping from one company to another there is no patience there is no um, you know there's no level of uh, commitment to a one organization then you will probably hop on from my company as well i don't want to invest in you so make sure you are not hopping and you're not coming off as a shopping around candidate because that will more often than not reject you if you have little or less sense of humor now there are times when the recruiter also passes sarcastic comments or has a sarcastic tone or is making a funny uh, you know is is making a funny statement if you're not able to understand the recruiter's sense of humor which means you have a lack of sense of humor and that means that you're not able to connect with the recruiter so the recruiter is not able to connect with you and if you have little or less sense of humor and you're not able to take you know jokes on yourself or you're not able to make uh an, or have a nice laugh and there's something funny happening it just shows that you're a little uptight you're a little introvert i want somebody to you know have a nice conversation with ultimately it boils down to just a nice professional conversation between two people who are trying to make sense out of it if there is no sense of humor this conversation won't really happen if there is no interest in organization or industry if you're in the wrong place you are targeting you're talking to a wrong person in the wrong company in the wrong industry i will get to know this through your technical question through the to the question that i'll be asking you throughout the interview and if i see that there is no interest and you just deliberate you know out of compulsion you're deliberately sitting you are uh, you have no intent to sit you're just sitting here out of compulsion uh, that shayad the job lag jaye this is not going to work do not do this if there is too much emphasis on whom one knows if you are laying a lot of emphasis on a referral that i know so but i know somebody i know the founder i know the the managing director of this company how can you not select me if there is too much emphasis on this you will never be selected why would i want somebody who's coming in with or is bragging about their references in the organization i don't want somebody like that i want somebody to to earn it to earn that position so if you are talking too much about your reference if you are talking about whom you know it's not going to work so rather avoid it So these are a few mistakes that a lot of candidates make these are the most common interview mistakes i want everybody to go back through these four slides understand them absorb them and write before the interview visualize it do not make these mistakes i'm 100% sure that you will definitely crack that in all the best